Now, the lipid hypothesis, i.e. that cholesterol causes heart disease, um, started off many, many years ago with the observation that people with cholesterol plaques or atheroma around their eyes or in their limbs also had cholesterol accumulation in their blood vessels and got heart attacks. So it's not unfair that people thought cholesterol causes heart disease. Um, and later on, people found that the level of cholesterol in those people's blood was also high. And then there were whole families discovered that had high levels of cholesterol in their blood that had heart disease. So this built the lipid hypothesis. And just as we know that um, the cholesterol in the blood can gradually leak into the blood vessel wall, make a sort of fatty streak and then organise and create disaster and thrombosis, so too, when we were discovering blood, we sort of discovered the progression. Originally, all we could do is measure cholesterol and triglyceride. And we thought, well, some people have got a high cholesterol, some are We don't make any sense of it. And then this guy, Fredrickson, who really invented the whole study of cholesterol and triptosity, he, he looked at the blood samples from different people and found they look different. So some people, when you rest their blood, the chylomicrons, all the fat floats to the top. Others, it's sort of space right throughout the blood sample and others it floats to the top and is through the bottom. Others have high cholesterol and it doesn't look at turbid at all. So he described this phenotypic classification of hypercholesterolemia that many doctors still think about it, even though it's 50 years on. But this sort of pointed to something going on within the blood. More than just cholesterol and triglyceride, there was something different about people's cholesterols and triglyceride. And this guy, John Goffman, back the Americans invented the ultracentrifuge to separate uranium isotopes and create atomic bombs, but others, others tried to use it for even better uses, like medicine, and they used it to separate the particles that contain the triglyceride and the cholesterol. And they found that some particles were very light or very low-density lipoproteins, and some were very heavy-density lipoproteins. So suddenly we had more than just cholesterol and triglyceride, we had these different lipoproteins, but we didn't really understand what they were. We understood that chylomicrons were huge and that HDL and LDL were small. So the liver makes this particle, VLDL, which is full of triglyceride. This is how we transport fat around the body most of the day. So whether you um, store it and put it out or whether you um, make it from sugar and put it out, this is the delivery system for triglycerides in the blood. And as those triglycerides go into the tissues that should burn the triglyceride rather than store it, um, the particle changes. It loses its triglyceride and it becomes a, lower, a higher density. It's lost the fat which floats, so it becomes a bit heavier, intermediate density particle. Now that particle can go back to the liver. No, some people it goes back early, some people it goes back later, but it can go back to the liver through this APOE receptor. And it, but it can stay out and lose virtually all of its triglyceride and then it becomes the LDL particle. And what the LDL particle should do once it's done its main job is go back to the liver. And that's what healthy LDL is. It's just part of the fat transport system. And for a lot of people on high fat diets, where you're pushing a lot of energy through this system, it's not surprising that LDL increases because you're just putting more traffic through this system. Doctors to trust .com. Please share this video with loved ones.